house for a minute tomorrow. Are you excited? Hell yeah. I just feel like we should christen it too. I mean, you can't just start dressing like a boss. You have to start acting like one too. My heavy boyfriend worked for Duda. He's just a lookout. Ain't no such thing. If anything happens to my son, I kill you myself. Emmett! What's happening, YouTube fam? It's your boy Lamont Tyson back in the building to give you guys my shy season six episode three trailer breakdown but i'm also going to kind of recall some of the things that i've seen in episode two of this season that gave me calls to pause and we're going to dive on into it but if you're finding me for the first time please subscribe if you've never been to my channel before what you see scrolling is a playlist of all the things i got on my channel i've done interviews with celebrities I do trending topics, I do the shy, I do power, I'm getting ready to gear up for force, I do black culture issues, white culture issues, and movie reviews, check me all out. Let's jump into what I thought about last episode, and first and foremost on last episode, that damn Tracy, man, y'all know she was one of my TV wives and I had to kick her ass to the curb. Why? Because she's in the bad boys. And the sad thing is, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not really into light-skinned chicks. I like them chocolate. And I broke my own damn covenant over this thick yellow Tracy. Yes, I did. Only to have my heart broken by another TV wife. I'm gonna have to give up these TV wives, y'all, because they just keep breaking my heart left and right. And then Vic introduces Jamal and look at her. Did y'all see how her panties went super soaker? And you knew when she sat down with that book at the end of this episode, she was thinking about calling him because she's sick of Duda. She erased Duda number and she was thinking about Jamal. Don't be surprised if Jamal get the draws. But the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, maybe Jamal really and truly has reformed. And I hope that's the way his storyline is going to go. And then I'll be happy with Tracy again. And then my people. Yes, yes, yes. My boy, Big Papa. Finally is about to get some panty draws. Yes, yes, yes. This young lady right here is doing it the right way. She's trying to wait for him to be 18. But for my lawyers that follow my channel, I think she says she was 19. Don't most states allow a two-year gap? Because think about it. If you are a senior in high school, most likely your ass is like 17, 18. And let's say you're 18 and you're dating a freshman or something like that. The freshman can't be no more than what? 14, 15. So couldn't she legitimately date Papa? But let's say let's say she's gonna do it the way she's doing it. Can't we admire that a little bit? Or do some of y'all still look at that as grooming? Either way you look at it, I'm glad Papa's about to get it in with a dime piece because they keep overlooking this dude. Papa has the substance of a good dude. Yes, he does. And I want to see the good dude win. And let's keep it in fact that I was a chubby kid in high school, but I had a whole lot of Mac game. I just throw my hat on and go into Mac mode, and I would be pulling them babes. And that's what Papa's about to do. Can y'all get ready for a love scene with Papa and this young lady right here? Clothes all off, throwing them everywhere. That sex scene is probably going to last every bit of 15 seconds because Papa ain't never had none. Then, ladies and gentlemen, we get on to Rob, Tiff, and this weird ass dude right here who looked like he wanted to have sex with the weed he's growing. I trust this weird dude um, because he seems like he's legitimately trying to help. It's just that his ass is a little weird for me. But the problem that we're going to run into is what Rob has to do. And is Tiff going to be on board for him having to do what his mama wants him to do in order to get that 100K? And I can tell y'all right now, Rob ain't no damn killer. He's going to investigate. He's going to try to figure out who did it. But what's going to happen when he figures out who did it? I think there's a clue in this trailer I'm about to break down that's going to let us know what Rob is going to have to do. But Rob ain't no killer, y'all. Post your comments. Let me know if you think Rob is a killer. Then we get to my boy Shad, who is just having an identity crisis. He done been to jail, done his time, hard to get a job. He don't want to feel like he's living off this woman. And she's one who's willing to pay for his ass to do everything. But, you know, we all have an identity that we want to have on the world. Um, you know, we nobody really wants to be living off someone else. 
we want to be able to say we're doing our own thing and we're contributing to the relationship. And he's trying to do that. And she seems to be somewhat supportive. I just hope that his efforts to try to be his own man don't ruin the relationship. And maybe she'll soften her temperament a little bit and kind of help the brother a little more with a little bit more understanding. But I like the way I like the way they're going with his character and this relationship. And hopefully it means something good. Let's watch the trailer breakdown, trailer review one more time, and then we'll go from it piece by piece. House four minutes tomorrow. Are you excited? Hell yeah. I just feel like we should christen it too. I mean, you can't just start dressing like a boss. You have to start acting like one too. I hear your boyfriend work for Duda. He's just a lookout. I didn't know such thing. If anything happens to my son, I kill you myself. Emmett! So, ladies and gentlemen, Emmett is about to get this new house, and I guarantee you do to put down the down payment. And he's in here talking to Keisha. She's all happy, and he's like, you know, we might as well go ahead and break this bitch on in with some laying it down. You give me them panty draws, and that's exactly what they do. He pick her ass up, and he slams her to the ground like he's doing an old Arn Anderson spine buster. Probably fell all up in the pussy. Broke that house in good fashion. Skeet all over the place. Then we get to them having a damn house party, ladies and gentlemen. And this house party looks to be more lit than the house party movie that Emmett played in earlier last year. Because they is getting down. They doing the, the WAP. They doing the Tootsie Roll. Cuban Shuffle. Every one of the black dancers you can think of. Everybody's in here getting it in. And then, folks, look who walks through the damn door. Oh, hell. That fucking dude. The man who is playing chess right now with Emmett and everything Emmett is doing. And for whatever the reason, Emmett is not able to see what's going on. Keisha is doing a better job of scoping it out. He comes in, pull off his jacket, goes over there and smiles to Emmett and says, Look, bro, if you want to be a real man, if you want to step your game up, you need to take this damn gun. So Duda gives him a gun as a housewarming gift, ladies and gentlemen. And then you see the look on Emmett's face. Emmett ain't about this life, y'all. But here's what I think is going to happen. This gift that Duda gave him, this could be the very weapon that puts a bullet through Duda. Now, I didn't say kill him, but I did say put a bullet through him. Post your comments if you think Duda just gave the gift of death to Emmett in the weapon that's going to injure him. And then we get my man Vic Mensa playing a character named Jamal, talking to his sister Lene, saying that he do not like the fact that her little boyfriend, Bakari, is working with Duda. And she's telling him, oh, he's just a lookout. You just got back in my life. Don't be trying to call no shots. Well, Big Brother's like, sis, I've been in the game. It ain't no such thing as a lookout. And then they show her talking to Bakari, and it looked like they had a damn argument because she walks away a little upset. Bakari's just looking out into the space, and I think that she is starting to not believe what Bakari is doing. Or at the very least, she know that her brother used to be in the game, and he spent some time doing the game, and he's probably telling the truth. So it makes me wonder, ladies and gentlemen, could a situation come up where Lene is threatened and the brother who has turned his life around, he step up to the plate and have to do some things to do to post your comments. Then we get down to what is the crescendo of this trailer. Darnell, who his fatherhood feels threatened by Duda because Duda is showering Emmett with all kinds of financial blessings, runs out there to protect his baby boy, pulls Duda, who's walking to the car, and says, look, bruh, you hurt my son. You see this piece on my hip? It's going to be stuck in your ass. And then Duda gets in his face. And I'm wondering, what the hell is wrong with Darnell? Darnell know that this dude is crazy. Darnell acting like he ain't got nothing to live for. Mind you, he just got back married to Emmett's mother. And he's running out here acting like he got nothing to live for. But you know what he's living for? the life of his son who looks to be doing very, very well. And he don't want some Johnny come lately fake ass father ruining that. But you know what? 
it might be too late for that. Because after they cut from this scene where Duda gets in his face and smiles like, bro, I'm the devil. You is a nobody. You don't know what I do to you. We hear a gunshot and we see Emmett running out of the bedroom. Is he going to go grab his gun? And we see Keisha screaming and hollering, oh, no, don't go, don't go. Ladies and gentlemen, is this a misdirection? Did somebody get shot in that situation? What if Duda really had someone shoot Darnell? What if Darnell shot at Duda? Post me your comments on what you think is going to happen, and I can't wait to see it. I'm going to try very hard to get my review up for this coming episode Saturday. It's been rough around here with a newborn, but I'm going to keep fighting for you guys. Please don't forget to like this video, comment, subscribe, share, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and the TikTok. And until that next Sex is Hell video, I'll see you.